Let's begin, and let's begin with introducing ourselves. So I'm Annette, and I'm helping out with operations and even organizing of Ethereum Magicians. And I'm a part of Operations Ring of Ethereum Magicians. And I'm how I joined Ethereum Magicians. It was actually a very interesting story that we started with Jamie when I had a call with him like back in like like beginning of the summer, I guess. Yeah, and then Jamie kind of saved me and he was like, okay, and I will join the Ethereum magicians because we are cool and you are cool as well. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, so basically I just joined the Ethereum magicians at the beginning of the summer. And this is Jamie and he will introduce itself. I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Jamie. And um, yeah, I'm, I work in DevOps at the Ethereum Foundation and I also volunteer for the Ethereum Magicians. And um, we, started the, we started the Magicians, um, it was about a year and a half ago. And uh, it's been a great experience, but essentially it was started to improve the process of developing the technology together. And so often at our meetings, we'll create a circle and we'll have discussions. And so essentially, I, joined, I started the Magicians with Greg Colvin so that we could all have a better conversation as a community. Um, is it story time? Yeah. Am I supposed to tell a story? OK. Um, so yeah, like we, um, we, we started with a proposal. We proposed to the community to form the Ethereum Magicians. And then uh, we started having gatherings. And we also created a forum. And um, ultimately, it's to, it's to improve the technology by en enhancing the communication among groups in the community. Because there's many groups in this community. We want them to come together and, and work things out. And so um, later we'll go over the schedule and we can, you can see how that's put to action. Yeah, but basically Ethereum Magicians is a forum where you can contribute to an open source and you can discuss about AIPs and write AIPs and you can meet the community over there. And we are basically a community of individuals who are working on the different parts of Ethereum. Ethereum Magician can be anybody who is basically want to, who wants to improve Ethereum and who wants to join open source ecosystem and who wants to work in a, in a working group that we call Rings. And uh, who is actually on a forum? On a forum is anybody. There are Ethereum Foundation researchers, there are all kinds of smart people, researchers. Oh my gosh, I said it twice. Um, there are core developers, builders, educators, and you can be a part of Ethereum Magicians as well. And there are actually all core devs who are using Ethereum Magicians forum as a tool where they can meet the community and discuss about AIPs and decide if the AIP is going to win through the process or not. Uh, yeah, click it. Um, yeah, uh, let me just explain you what are AIPs because I think that a lot of you guys are new to Ethereum. So AIPs are basically. You know, you know what an EIP is. Okay. So okay. about half the audience. So what's an EIP? Uh, AIP is basically Ethereum improvement proposal that anybody from the community will write AIP and like uh, a protocol improvement. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a uh, technical, <laughs> uh, technical thing that, yeah, whatever. Oh, let's well, move on. Okay, so um, an EIP is essentially a specification, and um, often they're very complicated technical documents, but you can also submit EIPs for a governance change or any change. And so there's different categories of EIPs, and it's totally open. So you can propose any change you want, and people do. People propose very strange changes to the protocol. They propose strange ERCs. That's absolutely welcome. And, and if you want to change the process, if you don't like how the process works, you can submit an EIP that, that is for that, too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, on, but Ethereum magicians, please go discuss there and prove your ideas, because talking is great, but proving that your ideas work is way better. And that's what everyone in the Ethereum ecosystem loves, when you are not just talking and shitposting on Twitter, but it's better when you are coding and creating the diagrams and prototyping. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, so uh, Ethereum Magicians is not only an online community, but we believe that in-person meetings have way bigger value for us, for the community, and way bigger impact 
on the ecosystem. So we are organizing magicians gatherings. Uh, we call those mag uh, magicians gatherings councils. And that's basically where the community will meet. It's usually like twice or three times a year, usually uh, during some blockchain weeks or some bigger Ethereum conferences. And that's where we are discussing about the main problems in Ethereum. And then uh, ring leaders are organizing ring meetings or working groups on behalf of those. Um, so yeah, to explain uh, the, the larger gatherings is when we really pull the community and find out what everyone wants to talk about. And that's what we'll, I guess we'll do a little bit of that right now in a moment. Um, but rings, which are basically working groups, will focus on a certain topic. So if there's anything that you're particularly interested in, and I think everyone is, everyone has something they're, they're going for here, everyone's working on something, there's probably others who want to work on that too. And so the Magicians is very open about helping you organize around that. And so we call those rings to fit in with the theme of Magicians, but they're essentially working groups. And at the end of today, if you would like to come back here, you can have a meeting with your group and, and perhaps announce it on Twitter and whatnot and try to actually get some work done. Um, but we try to do these meetings, three, the big gatherings, three times a year, and usually we're riding on the coattails of some major event. And that's today. We got a pretty good room today at DEF CON, so I thought, you know, I thought it was really nice of them to give us the space and, and give us the ability to, to work things out as a community. Um, so let's see what we got. Okay, yeah, so this, this is the schedule. You want to go over the schedule? Um, so actually, we are on time. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why we got scheduled this at nine, but whatever. Yeah, definitely uh, come to this room later on. And we are going to have a very interesting discussion with EEA, which is Ethereum Enterprise Alliance, where we are going to discuss about how Ethereum uh, Enterprise Alliance wants to join Ethereum community and how they want to like connect with Ethereum community. And I think that a lot of like spicy question we got ready at them. So it's yeah. gonna be a very cool discussion. And then definitely don't miss out the Ethereum roadmap sessions because that's basically the most important in Ethereum ecosystem and that's probably the most important like highlight of this conference, I think. And uh, if you if you are individual and if you want to like get some work done, or if you want to like contribute to the Ethereum ecosystem, definitely come to a working group. Or if you have um, questions about Ethereum and you want to discuss with us with magicians, then uh, then come to open mic on our open community discussion. Yeah, and that's it, I guess. Um, yeah. So that eleven. Uh, it's 11.30, want to confirm that. Yeah, 11.30 is the open community discussion. And so um, anything you guys want to talk about, we'll try to facilitate a discussion in the circle here. Um, so I really encourage that. I think a lot of people, you see it on Twitter, people have burning questions, and they tweet at each other. And maybe it's not the best way to communicate. Sometimes when you're face to face, you can actually work things out together and come to a resolution. So we really encourage you to do that. Um, and so I think what we can do now is see if there's any questions that people have in their mind if they want to work on something today. Um, and it's really hard because this is the very beginning, and so people might not want to come forward and, and, and speak out. But um, I guess we'd like to ask, is there, is there anything that's, that you think needs, the community needs to work on? Is there anything you feel like is unresolved in the community or about the technology? Um, this, do, you, do you have, wow, this is great, okay. I'm not surprised at all. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, give him the mic. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Dominic. Um, I'm active in one of the Ethereum rings for constrained, constrained devices, and I, I, I think I just um, wanted to talk about that because that's like my burning, burning topic. And the question was about the technical topics we want to improve in the community. Any topic. Any topic. So I think just, just having like the Web3 go into all the devices in the world and reaching small devices is like extremely important for that. And I find that the community is not driving towards, it's very focused on like desktop computers and miners and that, but not actually reaching out to, to getting everywhere where I think the original vision of Web3 was. 
So I'm, I'm super excited about that, that part and driving that forward. So if anybody wants to discuss that later, um, and maybe there's more of the Ring Group members here, I haven't, I think I've seen Ligi before here, but if there's members here, I would be happy to talk to you and how we can improve that with some EIPs. Yeah, yeah, I just think um, instead of communities polarizing, they need to find ways to work together to build human consensus. So I think that's important. I think that we will definitely discuss about it. Um, yeah. I, um, one, one issue I think is really important is um, I feel like there's a lack of strategy. This is, a, this is a big thing for me. I feel like all the teams are just independently working on their ideas but there's no articulation of strategy. And I think this applies to a lot of the core, the core groups. And um, I think the community is really into decentralization and, and uh, doesn't want uh, leadership as much, perhaps. Um, but I think people need leadership. And um, I feel like competitors to Ethereum have an advantage because they may have someone who can articulate their vision. And we hear the vision about the technology, but I feel like it's lacking in strategy. Um, so that's my, that's my two cents. Anybody else? So I think uh, just funding uh, Collins, uh, I know a bunch of you guys from different places. Um, and I think just funding open protocol design, I mean, we've seen it with Parity, we're trying to do things with Gitcoin, but a lot of the projects that get funded are by VCs and everything else, and, and I know them, I represent a bunch of them. And it's kind of a, an issue because a lot of that goes to people that aren't necessarily into the ethos of the community. So I would like to just figure out more ways to get funding back in the hands of devs that are actually doing yeah. open protocol design, since yeah. I think that's what got us here in the first place. Yeah, definitely. The, um, we, we have a ring for funding, and that's often the ring that a lot of people get involved with. Um, funding is such a huge issue, and um, I think certain projects are overfunded, as we all know, um, because of, of these fundraising events, um, and other projects are, are just terribly underfunded. And um, I think that that could really slow down the development of Ethereum as a, as a great technology. Um, anybody else? What have you tweeted about recently that's gotten you like tweet stormed or added a lot? Okay, well, um, I guess to give you an overview of um, how, we, how we run discussions, um, we're gonna try to create a, a circle here later. Uh, throughout the day, we're gonna try to arrange people in a circle. And um, often in these discussions, you'll have somebody who um, might show up who's very technically proficient and we want to make sure that, that they can be closer and, and participate in a discussion. But one ethos of, of the magicians is open process. And so basically we want to make sure that like say there's the core devs calls. We want to make sure that people can come into those calls and participate in that. And I think in general the core devs have followed really good um, approach for like how to govern a technology without a single entity in charge of the technology. Um, and so, in a way, I, I consider the core devs like a prototype magic, magicians group because um, they were doing that without really being told or having any, any kind of like model or anything. It just kind of emerged that way. Um, is there a lot of misunderstanding about how the core devs function? Or is it, is it, do you feel like in general the, the core devs are, are doing well with how they function? Um, I think that it's actually a good question on uh, cat holders and there is actually Tim. Um, I think, how do you feel about how the, the core devs are managed and how, how does that, you know, could you introduce a little bit about the core devs from what you know? So disclaimer, I'm not a core developer, I'm not a developer, period. Uh, but I do attend a lot of the calls um, because I'm a product manager and I kind of have to. Um, I mean, how do the core devs work? Like, I think it's a hard question. Um, yeah, and you should know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So I think obviously like it's doing well. Ethereum still works. We've had a lot of upgrades and you know they've generally worked. So like from a very base level, like it, the protocol works and, and the core developers kind of write the code to, to ensure that. Um, there's obviously a whole lot of challenges and, and that's kind of what we're here to discuss. Um, from trying to gather just like sentiment throughout the community uh, because the core developers kind of see one aspect of the protocol which is really kind of the actual Ethereum protocol themselves, but uh, they're not as close to stuff at the application level uh, or at the mining level. So it's always like this challenge of like how do you gather feedback um, from these groups who are typically not the people writing the upgrades but who are affected by them. Um, and I mean, yeah, is there is there a process for that? Like, how do they receive feedback from from different these different groups? Yeah. I mean, because I know so, they can, you can reserve on the calls to be a part yeah, of the call. So there's right? no official process, and contrary to what people say, I think that's a good thing because um, you do, if you have like an official process, it tends to get captured, right? Like people will like kind of hack it, um, and and so what what typically happens is. Uh, on the, the app developer side, if they have an EIP they feel strongly for events, they'll come on the calls and they'll kind of make a case for that, and that's very impactful. So I think if you're like a DAP developer or you know just working on some part of Ethereum and you want to figure out what's like the highest impact way to get in touch with core developers and have like your point of view be heard, just coming on the call or commenting on the agenda of the call if you can't come, uh, those things tend to have like a disproportionate impact. Uh, just an example recently, uh, there was EEP 2200, which changes some gas costs. That's really useful for Uniswap. Um, and Hayden, who's the founder of Uniswap, came on the calls, I think, or the Verities commented on the agenda that, you know, this is something that's really valuable and, and they're kind of counting on that. And there's no like direct voting or anything, but just that signal from like an important project saying this matters to us, uh, that's super valuable. Obviously, how did that happen? Um, I did don't know. They, did they come into a call, or how did how was that kind of thing communicated to the to the group? So you'd have to ask Hayden uh, because, yeah, I, I I don't know what was the process of like for for them to come and and, and comment there. Yeah. Uh, from the core devs call, I, I'm not sure if they just commented on the agenda or on the call with something like no, that. But basically, if you want to like make change or if you want to interrupt this process, just be active on the internet or visit the all core devs GitHub, I guess, or comment there or comment on the GitHub issue at the repo, the, I guess. How do they get on the agenda? So uh, the agenda is public. There's a repo. There's the Ethereum rep repo on GitHub, which is like GitHub slash Ethereum, I think. Uh, and then there's a repo called PM there for project management. And all the agendas and recordings and transcripts for the call are available there. And anyone is free to add, uh, to add a comment on the agenda. So if you want to talk about something, um, you just post a comment there. And I think Hudson manages most of the agendas to like, you know, go over the comments and make sure that uh, they, uh, they, they get addressed. Um, does anyone have any questions about about things in the community? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I think I, I think a, a general question I have is like how you deal with it, like the difference for with other open source. I think open source is like the model that Ethereum is like comparing itself to, and then a lot of projects like when I when I, I like to contribute when I contribute to like an any open source project like let's say Cassandra, you go to the repo, you you make a contribution, the PR request, right? It gets in. It's, it may or not, you know, like or not, and they say it, it's not getting in. But I, I feel with Ethereum, and maybe that's like uh, this in technology in general. Like, how many PRs do I need to do? It was like I need, I have Geth, and I have Parity, and I have like four others. Like, it's a really it good like question. I, I need the political process to like get it from the top down, right? So that that's like, how do you deal with that? Great question. Hard answer again. <laughs> um, Okay, so yeah, how do you actually get a change in Ethereum? You can't just like submit a PR, you don't know where to go. Um, the number one place that describes this process is EIP1. Uh, so there's a website, and, and it's on the Ethereum repo as well, but like there's an EAPS repo and an EAPS website, and the first one really describes kind of the whole process at length. Uh, it's a bit of a, a dull read, but um, there, there's basically two important distinctions. Are you doing something that changes the consensus rules or not? If you're doing something that doesn't change the consensus rule, an example of that is like ERC-20. Um, that's usually kind of easier 
typically the process there is you'll just write your EAP, get feedback from the community through something like Ethereum magicians and whatnot. Um, and there's some couple time delays, you know, between like you get your draft merge, then you get feedback, and then it gets like accepted and moved to last call. But it's usually like a pretty like easy to understand process. And, and usually if everything is right, then you get something like an accepted EAP. And, and no one, the, the thing is, no one's ob obligated to use your EAP, right? Like ERC-20, no one forces you to use ERC-20. Uh, but there is an EAP there that specifies it. So if you do want to use it, it's like documented. The hard part is, what if you want to change like the consensus rules, right? Uh, you want to decrease the block reward. You want to add an opcode, stuff like that. Um, that's what's called a core EAP. Um, and basically, the way that process goes is you first submit a draft. Uh, Typically, you'll want to like kind of research your idea because there's a lot of core apes that have been submitted and abandoned in the past. So, say you want to add like an opcode or something like that. Just trying to find out like did people try to add this type of opcode in the past, um, and 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 use that to kind of feed into your 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 EAP. Once you have a draft, typically people will go on all core devs to present it to get feedback. Um, and then there'll be like discussions. And depending on how contentious your EAP is, you'll get like a commensurate level of discussion. So if you're saying like, uh, one really good example, there was an EAP in Istanbul that was about adding a chain ID opcode, right? Super simple EAP to do, uh, high value because smart contracts can know what chains they're on. Um, not really contentious, you know, there's not really much that can go bad there. Um, so the person wrote the EAP, came on the calls, Maybe a couple calls, you know, back and forth. How do you do the details? There was actually a competing EAP around there. Like, do we do a pre-compiled or an opcode? Um, so, you know, they had those discussions, and it took a while. Uh, the opcode one, and uh, and then once once say like there's like a this, uh, consensus uh, uh, amongst like uh, Geth, Parity, and the other clients, um, they'll all implement it themselves. So typically, as like an EAP uh, and EAP champion, you only have to provide like a single implementation, whether it's against get, parity, whatever language you're comfortable with. Um, and when it gets accepted, then all the other clients will, will do it. So you don't have to do like five implementations. Um, obviously, if it's more contentious, you know, this process kind of falls apart a bit. Um, and, and, and what you want to do is build, you want to build consensus within the community. And, and that's the hard part, and I don't think there's like, there's no like one way to do that, right? Yeah, you basically, you kind of have to shill your EIP. Yeah. yeah. And you have to yeah. create an and, EIP and get support for it. It's a political yeah. process. And, and people kind of. It's not just technical. Yeah, people kind of frame that as a negative part. I think, and, and it's true that like, it does add some burden and it's, you know, it's not a, an easy thing to do. But at the same time, you are kind of changing your pretty use, like a pretty big protocol. So, so there is always is going to be some kind of, uh, uh, I guess threshold, you, you need to gain, you know, you can't just like change Ethereum and no one knows about it, right? And that like political process is kind of socializing this idea that you have within the community. Um, and there's, there's no good way to do that. I don't think there's any blockchain that has a good way to do that. Uh, because even like one big, uh, one big alternative to this is like, oh, what if you just have voting, you know, whatever mechanism to, to vote to, for these heaps instead, you still have to do that political process because you still need to get people to like vote in favor of your thing. Um, and, and so it's, I don't think it's that different than any other major blockchain. And that's basically the creative process of uh, contributing to an open source. You have to be creative and you have to create the memes around your IP and make people to get interesting into your IP to make it happen and to make it get in into an ecosystem. Yeah. Basically. Did you, did you have a question? It, yeah. was kind of, it, was, it was kind of answered there, but I guess what are your thoughts on you know, some of the more gridlocked issues? How do you think that people can reach consensus faster? Um, yeah. Do you feel like it's slow? Is that? Or no, I don't know much about the process. Um, just I know that like, just he from hearing some people talk that like, maybe they think that certain people's arguments aren't actually in good faith over certain things or like, how, okay. like I think also par partially that's because over the internet, I feel like people are less, less trusting of people. So like, you know, right. maybe meeting in person or something and seeing the other person's a real human and hashing it out. So I was, I was thinking about this this week, and I was telling you this when I wasn't listening to the first question. Um, 
I don't know if there's been a blockchain that has had like a major contentious upgrade that has worked without splitting the network, right? And, and if there are examples, please send them to me. I'd love to know and, and try to understand them better. Um, because in general, like these networks are open, anyone can fork off, right? So if something is at contentious enough that part of the community, you know, feels like it's a hill they're gonna die on, then they can go and, you know, die on that hill, like fork off and, and do that. And then the big question becomes what becomes the canonical, you know, protocol and, and not. Um, but yeah, I, I think if there's one thing you could like add value to Ethereum to resolve is like what's a way we deal with contentious issues without splitting the network? Because um, I don't think any blockchain has figured it out. Um, and even with Bitcoin, right? Like you had the user activated soft fork, stuff like that, like people kind of revolted and, and when there were contentious upgrades. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know. But like if we can figure this out, it's, it's really valuable. Yeah, yeah, just to get the biases out up front, I'm Brent Alsop with canonizer.com, just so you know I'm biased from the get-go. But basically, at the last core dev meetings, ProgPow was a big controversial issue, and people attended the meeting. Some people were threatening that if we didn't do ProgPow, there was going to be a fork. And other people were saying, well, if we do do ProgPow, there's going to be a fork. But the problem is, is no one knows for sure. And so that's what we do at Canonizer. Is you, as you build consensus, you build and track it. It's basically a wiki with camps. And so people can join whichever side you're in and, it, and that which you measure will improve and you can find out what both sides want and you can work to build consensus and it focuses on what everyone agrees on and that's what usually everyone misses because no one talks about that but, but basically our goal at Canonizer is building and tracking and measuring consensus. Okay. Could you pull that up on the screen here? Canonizer. Briefly? Yeah, yeah, let's take a look at that. Um, I think shortly we'll, we'll break too because we want to get start getting ready for the EEA session. Um, but know that at 11.30, if you want to come back and continue this discussion and whatever you want to talk about, often we, we get into the protocol, but there's a lot of ERCs and there's a lot of like, you know, creative stuff happening with tokens. There's so many different kinds of EIPs. And ERC is a type of EIP. So here, ERC20, that's actually an EIP. That's the, probably the most famous EIP. Um, so there's so many different kinds of proposals. And if you want to come back at the for the open discussion, open mic, we can discuss that. And we don't always have to drone on about the protocol. So there's many different aspects to get into. Um, but I'd like to say if there's any final questions, um, we can talk about those. And then we got to wrap to uh, get ready for the enterprise session. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to add that one of the other ways you can really contribute to the discussions and, and moving EIPs forward isn't just writing EIPs. Um, in many ways, we kind of drown in, in proposals and ideas that people have floating around. One of the most valuable things you can do is actually go to the EIP's registry uh, and, and look through what's there and start commenting and discussing and reviewing EIPs before they get scheduled for a hard fork. Because the process that generally happens is the EIP language is there for years, eventually all core devs decide to put it into a, into a hard fork, and then Twitter blows up. And everyone says, I didn't know about this. Yeah. Um, There's so, this thing called a meta EIP. You should look out for it. That's a collection of what's gonna, going to go, all the EIPs are going to go into the next release. Yep. Yeah. Um, and finding some of these links as well, allcoredevs.com. It's not an official thing, but it links off to some of these GitHub things with long URLs. And the meta EIP is linked there as well. Could you pull that up? We'll take a look at one that. thing I'll add about these meta EIPs, we do them well in advance. Um, and by we, I mean, you know, they get done anyways. Uh, and all the stuff that's proposed for a future upgrade or hard fork is listed there. So it's not only like after the fact, oh, hey, the core devs decided these five things are in. Um, but if, if you pull up like the Istanbul one, um, which is like 1679. Oh, right there, it's linked Istanbul Meta Eep. Um, I had no idea it existed. Yeah, so if you scroll down, um, scroll down. So you see here, there's like a whole list of withdrawn stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they didn't start off as withdrawn. Like a couple months ago, if you go on like the diff and look at the original version, these were all kind of proposed. And then through discussions, they kind of got accepted or, or, or withdrawn. Um, and, and so this is like a really good place. There's one that's already uh, open for the next upgrade after Istanbul, which is like uh, has a placeholder name of Berlin. Um, but, and I, I don't know the, the number, but uh, so you can see stuff that's already being proposed there. Uh, if you want to propose something, uh, you just open a PR against that meta EIP, and then people will kind of see you want to propose that. Um, and if you have strong opinions on anything that's proposed, like Adrian said, uh, you can go and, and, and share those opinions, and that's, that's really useful to, to build consensus. Thank you, Tim, for the valuable contribution to this discussion. <laughs>